when we talk about Nibbana and no rebirths, what are we saying that happens? Non-existence? End of life? Well, it, it's a pretty simple answer. I mean, the existence is momentary. No, one one moment is one existence, and it arises and it ceases. Uh, that doesn't happen in nibbana. That's the really the, the easiest way to understand it. Um, and since life itself is only composed totally of those momentary experiences then um, you know, there really is no such thing as a life that could end there's only experiences which end every moment and that doesn't occur they, there is not, no more arising of those momentary experiences of seeing, hearing, smelling, tasting, feeling and thinking well, of, of any momentary experience, because nibbana is eternal. That's what makes it eternal, or or undying, or uh, it's it's not the end of life. It's it's eternal life. It's 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 non. It's called amatta. Means no dying. But the meaning that the reason there's no dying is because there's no being born. There's no arising. Since there's no arising, there's therefore no ceasing. It's pretty, quite simple. Um, the Buddha refused to answer uh, questions of that kind, didn't he? No. No, I've heard people say that, but no, about Nibbana, it's quite clear. There's, um, well, there's questions like, um, does the does the well, the the question is, does the arahant exist after death, or does he not exist yeah. after death? But yeah, that's what I was the, mentioning. The point being that. There, there is no arahant, right? It's a concept. The problem, the the reason why the Buddha might not answer, and in certain occasions didn't answer, is because he knew that the listener wasn't wouldn't be able to appreciate and and wouldn't like that answer. Oh, I see. Mm -hmm. Not necessarily that it's unanswerable. the The answer is that the arahant never existed in the first place. There's only momentary experience. In fact, I was reading last night in the Majjhima Nikaya something. Uh, very interesting how the Buddha didn't answer. He didn't want to answer. It was it was totally unrelated. Related. It was the question about whether Brahmins are superior to to Katyas, the warriors, the nobles, or the Brahmins. Which one is superior? And he just wouldn't. He, he kept not answering, because he knew that if he said no, they're not superior, then the person would be but 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 and have arguments. So first he let them on this long explanation about. Uh, how how one could think that they are are unequal and so on until finally he cornered the guy and and he made the guy ask well in this regard are they um, are are they different and he said no the, then the Buddha was able to say without worrying about without concern about you know having this guy argue with them he said no then well in that case in that way they are not you know in regards to meditation it was something like in regards to their purity of mind. Because just if if any of the if a kasat of a katya or a brahmin is to take sticks and rub them together and make fire, the fire that comes is the same. So uh, in the same way, if a, if anyone is to practice meditation, it doesn't matter what caste they're in. But in other cases, the Buddha did say quite uh, categorically that the the, ca the different lo different types of people are, are there is no difference among them. But I think very much based on the audience, there were times where he, and then he said to Ananda afterwards, you know, if I had told him one or the other, he would have been more confused. Uh, so I, that's why I didn't tell him. But it's it's not that there is no answer, and there are certainly there is the case. I can't remember if it was the Buddha or if it was Sariputta, who said that um, it must have been the Buddha as well. What ha what is it that happens at? Um, at, at Parinibbana and I think this, this monk had a, a pernicious view that the self is destroyed at, um, at, at Parinibbana or he had some pernicious view like that and um, 
the Buddha re reprimands him, or sorry, Buddha, or I can't remember, it must have been the Buddha, and then the answer to the to the question, what happens at, at uh, what happens at Rebir uh, at uh, Brahnibana, is that the five ag and this is the this is the uh, orthodox answer, is that the five aggregates of clinging, which are impermanent, unsatisfying, and non-self, cease without arising again, cease without remainder. So nothing, nothing ceases that wouldn't cease anyway, but they cease without remainder, meaning there is no more of these impermanent suffering and un, un, and non-self states uh, arising. That's the orthodox answer, and it is in the Tipitaka. That's what happens at Nibbana, Parinibbana. Nibbana.